Hi folks. Okay, so we're going to do another video. Now the last three videos that we did were all about how to lay signs out, how to balance them, you know, measuring and, and different things like that. Uh, tips on how to spray your ink to keep your letters from flying around. So what I want to do now is we're going to do three more videos all on those signs that we laid out on the last three and uh, and then just kind of get them carved and sprayed sanded everything so you guys can see how this whole process works so um you probably remember this this was uh this was part of that first set of seven that i did um so i'm going to go ahead and, and uh, carve this one right now on uh, on camera so dad if you can follow along um now one thing that oh i need to switch out my hat for my headset here so you guys have probably seen this before I use this on a regular basis when I'm carving I don't always use the light because I've got plenty of light going on without it so um, this helps me see a lot better my eyes aren't quite what they used to be so this really magnifies everything for me so now what I want to do is I want to kind of go over um, how I set the depth the router bit I'm using is our standard 60 degree router bit um, uh, with hold, the three hold, it, flutes. hold it right in by the camera, son, so they can see it. Uh, well, show me where I'm at. Up, down. Well, I, I hold it right there. All right. Now tilt it a little bit. So this is that 60 degree V groove. Uh, what I use for almost all my inset letters. And what I'm carving here <clears throat> is one inch inset letters. So I want to show you how I go about setting the depth. So it's set just about at zero right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I think is going to be about right. Then I'll do a test cut. And so you're going by the width of the cut rather than the depth. That is correct. So I'll show you exactly what I'm going on here. So you'll notice that the width of the cut was just slightly wider than the stroke on that eye. That's about where I like it so that when I sand the sign off and I lose a little bit of that width, those letters are still nice and bold. So I'm going to go ahead and carve the rest of it. Pick it up and show them what you've done, son. Huh? Alright, hang on. You'll notice that I put a little, kind of a little dip at the top and the bottom of all my letters. That's just the way I like it to look. Dad started doing that about 35 years ago and I just, I kind of like the way it looks too. So, got a few more here to do.
Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll come back in just a second and we'll get this sanded off. Now, um, before I before I leave, I forgot to tell you, for you, those of you who don't know, this is that, uh, that uh, white cedar that I use. It's that cedar fencing. Almost all my so small signs are made out of that cedar fencing. So you I'm going to... Turn that around so they can see what it looks like finished. So there, there it is carved. Got that? Yeah. There it is carved. Okay guys, now what I want to show you is something I don't know whether we would actually showed before. I'm going to spray this sign and then sand it off so you guys can see how it comes out. But I also, uh, when I've got stacks of signs like this, the best way to, to spray the edge is actually stack them up. You're going to save a lot of ink by doing that. So I just want to uh, show that kind of on camera so you guys can see how that works. So now I'll kind of pivot those around. Hope you can stay with me there, Dan. Yeah, it's, everything's right in focus. Though. Okay, good. Let me just I'm kind of spray in the end of my bench here, but I've got most of it covered with paper. Again, you'll notice I keep that ink, that can moving. Don't uh, don't leave it in any one spot. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lot of issues. Eh, I have to get my finger black there. All right, so now I'll just bring this and I'll spray this. Go ahead. Got that down? Nice and light spray, so I'm going to turn it over to the other side. All right. So now uh, we'll come back on camera. When we come back on camera, I'll go ahead and sand that off and you guys can see how it comes out. Okay guys, here we go again. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this off, but I just wanted to describe this, uh, this, what my sanding operation is for you guys in case you don't know. So I've got a double sander set up here. These are 3 by 18s I like this little skill sander. It's like a $50 sander. And I really like them. So I've got like a 40, uh, e this is either a 40 or 50, and then a 120. So That's the uh, grid on the paper. Yes, the grid on the paper. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the back first, and then I'll stamp it, and then I'll uh, turn it over and sand the front. When you say stamp it, you mean you got a rubber stamp with the... Yeah. With our logo on it. Yeah, exactly. So you'll see that in just a second. Okay, you ready, Dad? Go. Now you'll notice I went cross grain on the back. Some people ask me why I do that. A um, couple different reasons. Number one, it takes it off a lot faster and on the back really doesn't matter. Number two is I want my customers to see the difference between a rough grain or a rough sand and a finished sand because when I turn it over now and I do the front, I'll sand uh, nothing but with the grain. So these little, uh, these little sanders work really, really well. I like the control of them, but when you've got a 40 or a 50 grit, you really got to be careful because you can take off a lot of wood in a hurry. So it kind of takes uh, some time to get a touch with that. So now I'll go on to the 120 grit and we'll put a little bit better, finer sand on it. that let's blow that off see what it looks like got that down got it okay so now I'm just gonna throw a finish on there now that you guys know I like this uh, this Krylon this is only about less than four bucks a can <laughs> over at Walmart and um, they finally put the good nozzle on there what they call the what is it called it's called a uh, easy nozzle. touch, easy touch tip. 
But you know, um, I used to use the, the Helmsman Spar Urethane and, and I always liked the tip. These tips work out really, really well. So um, Krylon, just in their wisdom, decided to put that good tip, which makes it that much better. And this, these things spray really well. So I spray the back, then I turn it over, I spray all four sides. And then just touch the top and then of course clear that nozzle after you're done. So that's, uh, that's that sign and that'll probably be dry in, in a matter of three or four minutes. Especially in 100 degree weather that we've got out here this time of year. And um, that's about it for this video. Now what I would, will do is on these signs, I'll put at least three or four coats on these signs. And uh, I can get three or four coats in a matter of a few hours. So um, now we're going to move on to our next video is going to be on those, uh, those bigger signs. So we'll wrap this one up and we'll see you on the next one.